All right, let's get it on and pop in. Oklahoma wins 52-27. to Hung half a hundred on TCU. Gary Patterson, Swete Gary, gave up 500 yards of offense. 300 plus on the ground. Kyler Murray did his Superman thing. But more importantly, the defense showed up to make the Sooners bowl eligible in October. Which is, you know, a thing that happens at OU. Well, I don't, I don't think that it's not happened since like 98 or something, man. It's ridiculous. And I can't jinx it because it's already happened. If you're in the chat, I'm going to holler out and say what's up to you. If you're not, you're late. So let's just see who's in the chat right quick. Man, y'all been in here for a while, so I'm not going to scroll all the way up. Uh, Shaw Robertson, what's good? Jay Bones is in the house. Caden Wilson's in the house. Den 5 Angels is good. Aaron Lewis is in here. Laura, what's good? Uh, Lloyd Grissom is in here. Sooner Bear, what's good? John! See you, fam. You should watch the video, John. I shouted you out. Uh, Eric Free, what's good, fam? Uh, Renegade, appreciate that, fam. See, Brendan Ludlow's in here. Matthew Bingham's in here. Clint Johnson, what's good, fam? Travis Penner, I see you. New Mexico Mike's in here. Willie, what's good? Nate brought us. Appreciate you, fam. Lamar Garrett, shout out to Kansas State Track and Field. Adrian White, what's good? Hank, what's good? Caden's in here. Rachel, I see you, fam. Raw Materials in here. Alec Cassidy, what's good? Zachary Meyer, what's good? Dieter Cross in the house. Robert Lane, I see you, fam. Cody Holmes, what's good? JW9, I see you. Almighty Sammy, there's a name. Zachary Myers, JK. Landon OU, WWE, Malik Rollins, what's good? Uh, the Debate Hitman, what's good? Eric Fry, I keep saying free. Yeah, I know. Uh, Daniel Bailey, what's good? Brian P's in here. Let's see. Let's see, what else we got in here? Ryan Eli, what's good, fam? See Bear Tompkins in here. Aaron from Austin, what's good? Let me see. Terry! Hey Terry. Uh Malachi Hills in here. Shane Brasher. Chris Crawl. Eugene Barnes. It's good. Uh <laughs> Dallas Cowboys headquarters. Ben Schwartz. Fire Jason Garrett. Uh, what else got in here? Jake from the Sooner State. What's good, fam? Jason Bradley. And shout out to Stephen Gordon, who has his cancer cornered. If you follow Stephen on Twitter, please send him good wishes, uh, prayers if you pray. Because He's almost got this thing whooped. Tim, what's good? Man, Tim, can seriously, already? <laughs> uh, OU defense, much better today. Third down defense, passive defense, stuff to work on, but impressed with changes so far. I was told Sermon was not walked out of the stadium with no brace, walking fine. Told told by who, man? I mean, uh, but I, I mean, I, good news, I guess, but I don't, I didn't take it that bad because I watched Trey Sermon's leg get twisted up six different ways in the spring game. And by June, the dude was doing, like, like this video was out of him doing, like, shuffle moves and stuff. And ladders, it was ridiculous. It's awesome. Uh, Mark Bland, what's good? Uh, what else we got in here? Fire the Big 12. I Hey, I'm for it. I'm for it. Defense gave up 20 points. We got some of that. Some of that from last week during the bye week where everybody couldn't score points and everybody had a hard time uh, moving the football and the defenses all of a sudden showed up. And I was like, yo. Y'all can't score unless OU is in this league. And what's true today, only we can score. And this time, we have the defense. If the defense continues to play like this, yeah, back to the Big 12 championship game and a fighting chance to college football playoffs. Got a lot to improve on, obviously. Those two dropped picks have to be caught picks. Khalil Houghton, that's why you don't play wide receiver, but you still got to come up with the pick. Buki, that is what you're there to do, man. Like, that's the pick six to the house, 14-point swing. Instead of 28-14, instead of 35-7, game was over, and everybody's on board with the defense is awesome if he makes that pick. Yes, missed tackles, but, you know, what else is new? There's grass on the field. I mean, that's just... <sighs> I don't like missed tackles, but 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 if it means that the kids are going to play more sound, they're going to play faster, nobody's going to be out of position, no oboes dropping back into coverage, no Mark Jackson's dropping back into coverage, you're seeing 4-2-5 and 3-3-5, and I hate three-man fronts. But you can run whatever you want if you're holding people to 20 points. I don't I don't really care. Uh, uh, seriously, I really don't. Let me see. Let me see. What else? Uh, appreciate that shout-out to Steve and Terry. Uh, Eric! Boomer. Love videos, bro. Appreciate that, fam. Uh, Tim says, delay of game on fake jam. Mind-blowing. Robert Lane. Brooks should be a mainstay in the backfield. So two things I want to address there. The delay of game is not a delay of game. It was called... It was called Parnell Motley made a non-football move at the wide receiver that forced the wide receiver to jump. And that's what they called Parnell Motley for. 
Because apparently if you get suckered, that's on the defense? I, I mean, I understand that the game is geared toward the offense, and, you know, you've heard that from defense coordinators since, you know, football was a sport, and it's not untrue, but if you got to call stuff like that, would, should we even be out here? I mean, that was kind of the feeling that you got the whole first half was that the Big 12 really doesn't like Oklahoma being in this conference because all of these BS penalties. I mean, how are you going to flag somebody for a DBZ celebration and you didn't even know it was a DBZ for the celebration? I mean, that was the other thing. We got we got some kids that didn't grow up in the 90s out here that need to go and watch some Super Saiyan dudes do their Super Saiyan thing. Need to get on their Master Roshi. You know what I'm saying? I know there's some folks in the chat that know what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. But that's kind of my point, right? You had referees out here that were out of sorts and out of time. So they're throwing these, making up these rules or so it seemed where all we're going to do is call OU for what? Whatever. Cody Ford is what? Half an inch off of the off the uh, right guard. We're going to call him for illegal illegal shift. I don't, illegal formation, not illegal shift. Point is. There's a lot of this stuff. Uh, what uh, Creed Humphrey, four yards downfield. No, that's illegal man downfield. When the play is over here, I, I man, I was, I was mad at the officiating all game. But that was the only thing that stopped the offense, really. You know, I mean, it, the, the, the offense gonna do what the offense does: throwing it, running it, whatever. Kennedy Brooks, Trey Sermon, how you want it, fam? You know, like at one point, Kennedy Brooks had 11 carries for 125 yards, and the crescendo on Twitter was peaking. As folks were like, yo, Kennedy Brooks is the number one. Kennedy Brooks should be getting all the carries. I don't know why we don't see more Kennedy Brooks. And then Trey Sermon, who had 55 yards on 13 carries, said enough and ended the game with uh, over 110 yards rushing on 17 carries because, you know, fourth quarter, the preacher man, that's where he comes alive. Look, Brooks did the tides an offering, then set it up for the sermon, right? Right? And then Austin Seibert came in there for the uh, to testify. You know how church goes. We take them to church on Saturday. But I was really, really impressed with the uh, the offensive line and the way that they just really mashed on the defensive line. Matter of fact, there was one play where I thought Trey Sermon should have, like, it was a play where they were measuring and reviewing the spot because he didn't get the first down. But I was going, yo, the offensive line blew the defensive line two yards off the ball. Like, they're, they're a yard in front of the first down marker. That's how good they were all day. And you got you to get past the line if you're Trey Sermon. And I hear people talking about, you know, the differences in running styles and one dude being more explosive than the other dude. Look, Kennedy Brooks just can see. His vision is ridiculous, and his decision-making is awesome. And Trey Sermon, okay, maybe he's a little bit more patient a runner, and maybe that hurts him. But at this point, I don't care which one of them starts the game because at the end of the day, they basically ended up with the same amount of carries. Like, let's take a look at it. Let's just look at what Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks did. Okay, because I don't think it was really the thing that put, I don't think it was the gap that people thought it was when Trey Sermon was getting on the carries. Let's see. Kennedy Brooks, 18 carries, 168 yards with a TD. Trey Sermon, 17 carries, 110 yards with two TDs. You know, and then Kyler Murray did his Superman thing, nine carries, 51 yards to go along with 213 yards passing. But look, they got this basically the same amount of carries. And the point here is that OU ran the ball 47 times against Gary Patterson and the vaunted TCU defense. Like, that's what they do. They play defense. We knew the offense was garbage. We knew that Sean Robinson was probably the worst quarterback in the Big 12, and we knew that he could likely get the hook, and he did, in this game for Michael Collins. So save the first three, four, five attempts for Michael Collins, where he looked like, you know, the kind of world beaters the backup quarterbacks look like under Mike Stoops. Ruffin and the defense said, nah, enough of that narrative. And we're putting an end to that. And they did. Because Michael Collins ended 7 of 17 for 142 with, you know, uh, what was it? Two TDs and a pick. I'll take that out of, out of any quarterback playing against OU every single time. Because we're going to do what we did, which is hang half 100 on you and keep you from scoring 30. You know, I, I, this was a complete game for me. You know, save the turnovers and you ended up getting one, right? Could have had three picks. You got one. All right. We need more ball hawks in the secondary. We knew this. And save the the look at four two five and three three five, which we saw a lot of. Honestly, I don't have problems with them. I really don't. I especially like Curtis Bolton just crushing through the offensive line. The second quarterback, you know, that's great. I mean, I, I don't I don't know where you're gonna pick a fight with these kids now. You know, to this narrative about they're soft and they don't show up to work and 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 how they just want it their way. Nah, 
That ain't that ain't what happened, right? They play good hard football. What do you want from them? Anyway, let's let's get into the, let's get in the chat. We about late hit on Murray. Well, I mean, he's had like seven of those this year. I can think of three off the top of my head. Uh, what else we got? Bear time. It's RJ. What do you think about some of our DBs and safeties putting in some extra time with the wide receivers working on their catching the ball skills? Uh, we could have had a few picks. Nah, if they're going to spend extra time doing anything, I want them to spend extra time wrapping people up, put them on the ground. Okay? I don't. Drop in interceptions is means that the other team didn't catch them. Right? Yes, we all want them to pick off passes, and that, you know, that's that's on the goal sheet. But the first thing is don't let the other team catch the ball. And wrap them up, put them on the ground. And that's something that, by the way, Iowa State does really well, and that's why they beat West Virginia. They wrap people up, put them on the ground. And that's how they stopped people today against DCU from converting on third down. Held them to 4 of 14 on third down because they wrap people up, put them on the ground. Flat out. Let's see. What else we got in here? Uh, Lloyd Grissom wasn't able to watch the game, had to work. Who played good on defense? Kenneth Murray, Curtis Bolton, Trey Brown for the most part. I mean, he got cooked up one time. Uh, Parnell Motley got cooked most of the game, but then had that big fourth quarter interception like he does. That's, that's just what he's going to do. He's going to get cooked up all game, and then in the fourth quarter, he's going to come up with a pick. Like he's got three this year. You know, who, who had Parnell Motley having three interceptions this year? Right? And half the takeaways on the defensive side of the ball are Parnell Motley interceptions in the fourth quarter. Just crazy. Let me see what else we got in here. Uh, hit the dab. Nah, nah, don't ever hit the dab. Don't ever. 47 runs humiliated Patterson. That's a really good take. Kelvin Hicks in here. O line was dominating. Yes, it was. Like, I think Brock Heward was on to something when he was saying the all-conference guys on the offensive line are going to be at right guard, right tackle, and left guard because Drew Samia, Ben Powers, and Cody Ford have been playing outstanding football, especially when they get to just mash on people, right? And I know Bobby Evans hadn't been outstanding, but he's been pretty great, right? And Creed Humphrey, for being the pup on the line, I mean, he's got the job and he's handling it, right? Uh, I... I've been a big fan of the offensive line all season, though, because when you look at the numbers, when you look at the rush numbers, the pass numbers, and you look at how good the offensive line has to be for those things to happen, I don't think it's fair that they get as much hell as they get, especially when people think that, you know, Trey Sermon getting stopped at the line is like regular. Nah, man, for every time they get stopped at the line, they break off two long runs. I don't get it. Well, I'm lying. I do get it, but I don't like it. Let's see what else we got in here. Yo, will we even play the Longhorns in December? I mean, if they went out, I mean, if they went out, we went out, that's the game. Like, West Virginia has a shot at both Oklahoma and Texas on its schedule, so they're going to have everything to say about who plays in the Big 12 championship at this rate. You know, the, uh, there is a world in which Iowa State plays the, uh, a team in the Big 12 title. I don't see it, although Iowa State is every bit as good as West Virginia. They beat West Virginia, and I think – they could beat Texas, but I'm just glad that we got that game out the way early because that team only looks to be getting better as the season goes on. Oh, what else we got in here? Where was Redmond? Redmond played in the first half uh, at defensive end. He had his hand on the ground. Number 31, I believe. Um, and DeLarian Turner Yell was back there playing safety. Good for him. You know, that's two dudes that we didn't expect to. I guess we kind of expect to see Jalen Redmond. Did not expect to see DeLarian Turner Yell. Uh, nah, I'm sure that they, they're, nah, I don't have any news on Sermon, and I'm not going to speculate about how injured or not injured he is, because that's not what we do. This ain't Jim Traver. Uh, pay for your student loans and natty like today. I don't think you did, but I appreciate it, Warhawk. Uh, I got, mm -mm, nah, I got, I had a lot of student loans. Uh, what else we got in here? What's Buki's usefulness on defense? Serious question. Uh, he's best when he's matching up man to man. Like what he does best is get into your grill and harass you. And then if you put the ball in the area, usually you know, in high school he come down with it. Also, he's been playing out of position all year. He's been playing safety. He's not a safety. He's a corner, right? But apparently they think he's a safety at this level. I'm not sold on that, but I'm also not sold on Jordan Parker playing safety either, right? And we're all tired of watching 
Parnell Motley or and Trey Norwood get the grids cooked. And I would like to see both Jordan Parker and Buki and or Justin Broyles even move back to corner because I think I think you got guys over there that you can play. You just move them to safety because freaked out that Chance Sylvie, Prentice McKinney, uh, and I'm forgetting someone couldn't play safety this season. Delarian Turner, yo, right? And you got him back. So I uh, I don't see it, man. Like I'm I I, I believe in Buki. I do. I believe in Buki. Cameron Frank, Parnell Motley is Zach Sanchez 2.0. Uh, sure. Fine. I'll take Zach Sanchez 2.0. Except he can tackle and he can run with people. Zach couldn't tackle. Zach never could tackle. Uh, Stephen Goodspeed. Can I get a shout out to my parents, Mike and Thelma Goodspeed from Dell City, Oklahoma, and 50 years of marriage? Good grief. That's what's up. Awesome. Shout out to Mike and Thelma, who. Don't hate each other after 50 years. That's what's up. Dieter Cross. Caleb Kelly played today, so he is not redshirt. This is true. It's a good point pointed out by Dieter right there. Blowing up the red shirt, And you're playing behind Bolton the rest of the way, Caleb Kelly. Also, we didn't see a 4-3, right? Remember that? Didn't see a 4-3 at all. Didn't really see a 3-4, which I really enjoyed, by the way. Um, I mean, not in the way that we expect to see it. Yeah, ran a lot of 3-3-5 and a lot of 4-2-5. And I guess that that's what you can do when you can stop the run the way that OU did today. New Mexico Mike, looking ahead, the Sooner offense appears to be unstoppable. What is the toughest outing for the defense? Got to be West Virginia. Got to be. I mean, I don't. I, I expect I expect Ruffin and the defense to pull a lot from what Iowa State did against Will Greer because dropping eight and tackling was giving them fits because they couldn't run the football. But that's, yeah, that's that's the game, right? West Virginia is going to be hard. Also, Kansas can play defense, so I'm not necessarily expecting them to slow down the offense. But if you're going to look at a team that can actually play uh, the rest of the way, and Texas Tech is so banged up. Like, they started Allen Bowman today, who had a punctured lung two weeks ago. You know, that's their quarterback. I guess that's how much they like Jed Duffy. It's really not a good look if you get Duffy. But also, next week, you got to tackle Alex Barnes. And we know that Bill Snyder, uh, Merlin, and his merry band of Juco rejects are going to show up to this fight with a brick. And whether or not Oklahoma shows up with a brick, we will see. But he's going to run Alex Barnes down Oklahoma's defensive throat and try to play keep away from the offense. We know that that game is always just kind of weird because... Bill Snyder basically runs some variation of single wing and dares you to stop it while they play good sound defense. I, between Kansas State and West Virginia, those are the games that scare me. Oklahoma State, they don't even know who their quarterback is right now because, well, everybody but Mike Gundy wants Corndog to take a seat and give Mr. Texas football, Spencer Sanders, a shot. But apparently Mike Gundy just ain't going to do that. And, it, and that's also weird because this is a dude that burnt up Mason Rudolph's red shirt, so it ain't like he won't do it. It's just weird. Also, Mike Gundy could be waiting until the last four games of the season to play Spencer Sanders so that he can keep his red shirt, which I could see at this point. Let's see, uh, what else we got in here? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. RJ, please grade our defense. Uh, I do that for OUinsider.com. That'll be out tomorrow. Let's see. Uh, I like the Sermon Brooks rotation. Reminds me of a potential P. Ryan Mixon rotation. Slow your roll, dog. It ain't that good, but it is it's good, but it ain't that good. Slow your roll. Uh, what else we got? Texas Tech is going to be the dink and dunk game that used to eviscerate Mike's defense. Yeah, well, I mean, again, I think a lot of the sure tackling and or the breaking up passes is they didn't really run a whole lot of scheme. You know, there weren't a lot of dudes moving around and trying to figure out where they are. They were allowed to just play loose and fast. And I think if they're allowed to play loose and fast against Texas Tech, yeah, they'll dink and dump, but everybody be right on top of these Texas Tech receivers, and that'll make a big difference. Collapse lung, not punctured lung. That's right. But, you know, any any anytime something happens with your lungs and you're still playing football and you're not out of breath, that's not what they're talking about, it's a big deal to me. Uh, also, I would charge anybody to do this live and not make a mistake. Uh, Sooner East, I've arrived. <laughs> that's what's up. Uh, what else we got? Crisscrawl. The defense is still missing that nasty in your grill appendage snapping attitude. Um, okay. D 
Do you think that TCU had it when they were playing Ohio State? Do you think that Iowa State had it when they beat West Virginia? I'm asking, like, what, what does that look like outside of, you know, the defenses that we love that don't play in this conference? Georgia, Clemson, Alabama, like, I'm ruling them out. You know, we talk about snappy attitude and snappy edge, but there's a whole bunch of people that were calling this defense soft. Did they look soft today to you, giving up 20 points? Giving up, what, 10 to 25 for 163 yards passing? Two TDs, one pick? I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, th- I think they look plenty good. Let's see. Let's see what else we got. Defense wasn't great, but there were signs of improvement. Many signs of improvement. Look, again, you held a TCU offense that put up over 500 yards, 28 points against number two ranked Ohio State, undefeated Ohio State, like six weeks ago to 275 yards total, 4 of 14 on third down. Didn't get it past 200 yards passing? Like, yes, that's improvement. That's improvement even based on what OU has been doing for the last seven games, man. Like, short of Florida Atlantic, have we seen a dominant display by the defense since then? This would be it. And it's during Big 12 play when everybody said you had to have a dominant show of defense. You know, and years ago it would have been Kansas doesn't matter. Okay, so now you're going to tell me TCU doesn't matter? I mean, pick your fight, man. Like, I'm ragging on the defense as much as anybody. Uh, But what I saw today was the kind of defense that will win a Big 12 championship, right? And it's the kind of defense that if you played in the college football playoff, I don't think they're going to get you beat because guess what? Is when they lined up in three-man fronts, there weren't these big runway alleys for people to run through. You know, you had Kenneth Murray and Curtis Bolton hitting those gaps. I'm just saying, take the win, man. Take the win. Was Q Overton still out? I don't know. Didn't see him. Uh, D-line still had their issues. Special teams woes seemed like uh, one was off today. Why TCU honestly had 20 points. Do you agree? Not really. I mean, special teams was a product of the referee giving the extra field position to where Turpin could take it out of the end zone. I get that people are talking about, look, uh, Turpin had opportunities to return and had a great day all purpose. All right, fine. But I'm not willing to put that on special teams. I'm I'm not, you know, because if he had those sorts of returns and he didn't take one to the house, we wouldn't be talking about how special team sucks. That's not what we would do. We're only talking about how the special team is garbage because they gave up six on a kick return that the refs gifted them because CD and Hollywood had the nerve to do a DBZ celebration after they scored the first TD of the game. So, no, I'm not buying that. You know, I made that joke about who left Beamer in Norman because it's funny, not because it's true. Right? What's true is referees gave them a spot. And Cravante Turpin did what he can do. Let's see. Uh, what else you got? Frank Master. RJF TCU QB wouldn't have hurt his hand. Is what, what are we? Okay, okay. He did hurt his hand, though. Right? And if, if he was that bad off, put Sean Robinson back in the game. Like, I'm not, I mean, what if Buki had picked off the pass from Sean Robinson and taken it back? Is that where we doing that right now? Because that's what it sounds like, right? You don't want to give a W to the defense when they played like they deserved the W. You know, I'm a, I'm a big soccer fan, right? I, I root for the Arsenal, right? So you Chelsea fans can can kick rocks. You Man U fans, Chelsea fans can kick rocks. I'm, I'm kidding. If you like the EPL, we're on the same team because this is America and don't nobody really like soccer like that. But I'm bringing it up because... One of the arguments that you hear a lot is who deserved to win on form, you know, who played like they deserved points, you know, deserved a draw or deserved three points. The defense played like it deserved to win straight up, full stop. The offense didn't win the football game so much as the defense showed up to let the offense continue to do what the offense does, which is what everybody continues to say you need at Oklahoma. You know, everybody but me would tell you, Hey, the defense doesn't need to be a juggernaut. It just needs to be okay because the offense is next to godliness, right? The offense is a Mortal Kombat move, right? The offense is Super Saiyan all the time, okay? And yet, today, right now, when we got a dominant display by the defense, we're picking it apart because the quarterback hurt his hand, right? Because a couple DBs dropped some INTs. Who's going to talk about how the defense gave up just three points in the second half 
to a football team we know can score points and hasn't in Big 12 play, and I was the first person to point that out. But we know we're capable. You know? Shewo Ololonio. Oh, man, I was practicing. I screwed up his name. Olanalua. Shewo Olanalua. And Darius Anderson. Neither one of those dudes could run the ball. Neither one of them. And I expected both of those running backs to have a field day with this defense, no matter who was the coordinator, because I just thought that it was that that eager to give up rush yards against TCU, right? I, I wasn't expecting those two dudes to get stopped. I mean, really, play after play. Like, let's take a look at it. Like, I just was, I was amazed when I looked at this, because, again, I expected those two dudes to be the offense today, because what Army was able to do against Oklahoma I have been saying, like, I would run on this defense. Like, I would I would totally run on this defense. And when we have rushing, we had, geez, Michael Collins ended up as, as TCU's leading rusher. Seven carries for 36 yards. Shewo Onolonalua. Olonalua. Yeah, Olonalua. 11 carries for 34 yards. Darius Anders had just six carries for 32 yards. And TCU averaged 3.7 yards per carry on 30 attempts. 30. 30 attempts you holding people to under 4 yards per carry. I, I'm just saying, give the defense the props that it deserves. And don't try to take it away with what if Michael Collins did this or that. Right? What if Sean Robinson showed up to play like he did against Ohio State? Didn't. Right? I mean, play, played the game that was in front of them. You know, uh, and, and as much as we throw shade at the defense for the bad games it does play, Texas, hello, yeah, give a W when they earn a W. Otherwise, what are we what are we arguing about? Let's see, stop with the trick plays. Nah, man, uh-uh, I love the trick plays, and I know that I know they didn't work today, but uh, that Statue of Liberty play had me shook because <laughs> you know we got history, but I I saw Kyler sell it. You know, it just kept looking. Just kind of, I was yes, please, more trick plays. I know the the wide receiver double pass didn't work, but that's the most fun. I love how much fun this offense is to watch because it's got a lot of moving parts and it's got a lot of people in motion. You know, even with the QB draw, there was a big show for that QB draw. So much so that I didn't see it coming until it got up under center. Right? I mean, no, no, the trick plays are awesome. Stop with the squib kicks. You know, that onside kick that was a squib kick because Lincoln Riley apparently trying to give us all the shakes with that, you know. And when Oklahoma scored 38 points, there were the jokes about, you know, 38 points should be enough to win any football game, you know, because that's how many points the offense scored in the Rose Bowl. But no, that was was fun. That was fun. Uh, D didn't just play well, all things considered. The, The D played well, period. Don't qualify that statement. Don't qualify that statement. When you hold a Big 12 offense to under 300 total yards, you played well. Period. When you hold a Big 12 quarterback to under 200 yards passing, you played well. Period. When you hold a Big 12 rushing attack to 3.7 yards per carry on 30 attempts, you played well. Period. No, don't qualify that statement. Give the dudes props. They deserve props. You know, we've been busting them all season for this. Come on, man. Be on the kid's side. Just happy to get the W. Thought D looked uh, all a lot better fundamentally. Boomer, Casey Beckham. That's what's up. Beckham family stand up. Uh, Did our D get tired? Oh, my God. All right, now we're just trolling. Uh, Kellen and I hate... Oh, great. Jumping in somebody's conversation. RJ, did you see that the new Schooner State statue on campus? Yeah, and I, I made a, I'm, you know, I made a joke about it. I was, you know, when I saw it, it was new on American Pickers, because you know, I bet that statue was donated. I'll bet you know, oh, you didn't actually buy that statue, but still, it's not a good look for a school that is claiming to be, you know, millions of dollars in debt. It's just not a good look to acquire something that's bronzy and, and gaudy and going into a museum because. This is not the kind of place where we take to artifacts well, right? We don't we don't really care about your decoupage. We want to see loot. <laughs> you know, that's 
the, o- the only statues and trophies that we want come courtesy of sports, man. No, we don't, we don't buy, to buy stuff for it to look pretty in Oklahoma. We, nah, that's not what we do. Uh, that statue play killed me. My dad was screaming. <laughs> yeah. Only thing that uh, was somewhat bad was cornerbacks on number seven. Well, I mean, hey, Jalen Rager can play. Like, that's that's like saying the only thing that was bad is putting CeeDee Lamb or Hollywood Brown on a corner. Yeah, they're going to lose those fights. They just are. Uh, let me see what else we got. Kelvin Hicks, great job by the defense. I personally am happy with the new direction. Hey! And that man's word means a lot more than some other folks' word because he's got a kid that's committed to the 2019 class that plays defensive end. Also looks like a tree in his uniform up there, man. Uh, So that's also something to take into account is what do the recruits and the recruits' families think of the defense? Did they think that we got skull drug? Because I don't think they do. You know, and if you got folks like Kelvin Hicks showing up in the chat to say, hey, I like the new direction, I like the way the defense played, that should mean a lot to folks in this chat and watching this stream. Because also, you got to impress us because we kick in for this team, and it's our team, but you also got to impress them because they're the kids that have four and five star next to their name, and they're the kids that we're trying to convince that our defense is on the up and up. Matters. Matters quite a bit. Uh, is Turpin finally out of eligibility? <laughs> I think so. I think this is his last year. I think he's a senior this year. I, I can look it up, though, because uh, cause I know there's a lot of folks across the league who are like, yo, can we get that dude who can fit in everybody's pocket, you know, the life-size version of Tyreek Hill? Can we get him out of here? I'm sure they're saying about Hollywood Brown. He's only been here, what, a year and a half? He'll be here two seasons. He's going to drop the deuce. Um, no upsets today. I guess. Uh, who is the best blitzer? Well, today it was Curtis Bolton. You know, I think a lot of people would say it's Caleb Kelly, but Buki is actually pretty good on the blitz. He just gets picked up sometimes and gets mauled. So I mean, but I actually, not nah, let me let me let me recant that statement. Justin Broyles is the best blitzer on this team. Every time Justin Broyles is dropped down to go get somebody, he looked good doing it, right? And I and that's that's not regular for a dude that was raised as a corner and learning to play safety. You know, I like Justin Broyles. I mean, it's like Ryan Jones for me. It's another dude that I just like seeing on the defense, and you need to find a place for him to play because it's just a football player. You know, between those two dudes, I don't know that I like anybody more on the defense outside of K-9. You know, and and everybody likes K-9 because he's the best defender on the team. But Justin Broyles and, and Ryan Jones, that's the safety duo that I want. But I'm not gonna get it for lots of reasons. Let's see, well, what do we got? Uh, radio broadcast said he was okay. Okay, so folks listening to the radio broadcast said uh, Trey Sermon is okay. Turpin is TCU's Tyler Lockett. Why does everybody try to make every Big 12 team with, you know, a so-so wide receiver into their Tyler Lockett? First of all, Tyler Lockett was a gamer. Tyler Lockett had like 200 yards receiving in a game that uh, OU won in Manhattan just Toasting Zach Sanchez in them. I remember that. A lot of people don't remember that, but I remember that. Tyler Lockett is not is. Uh, I don't like that comp because I think it does a disservice to Tyler Lockett, right? There's somebody else that we can think of, like saying, I don't know, Cavante Turpin is TCU's Jordan Shipley. How about that? Let's pick a dude that can't play in the league, right? Let's do that. Because Dez Bryant played in the league. Tyler Lockett is the best wide receiver on his team in the league. Uh, Tyreek Hill played in the league. Came through here. You know, I haven't even got to OU wide receivers like Sterling Shepard. Played in the league. Came through here. Kenny Stills. That's just my own personal thing, though, right? Because I think the Tyler Lockett was a special wide receiver who just, you know, he went to Kansas State because he's a legacy and that's where he wanted to go. But Tyler Lockett was a cold dude, right? And Kevontae Turpin... Is more like TCU's Jalen Saunders. It's a dude that is good, but good in the Canadian League. Not necessarily good in the NFL. Let me see what else we got in here. Uh, FAU hasn't played anyone. I mean, they played UCF and got drugged. Uh, I'm officially changing Lee Morris' name to ATM because he's an automatic TD machine. I, I don't think there's a lot of folks that will fight you on that. 
Uh, if Sermon is out long term, how much does he hurt? Uh, I mean, first, I'm not prepared to say he's out long term. But even so, Marcellus Sutton, TJ Pledger, Kennedy Brooks, we okay. And you know what? People continue to think of the running back position like it's an offensive line position, right? It's not, okay? If you lose an offensive lineman, especially at a place like Oklahoma, you're in a bad way. Like, even worse than losing Kyler Murray would be losing one of those dudes on the line, right? Because having good offensive linemen, especially in college football, is a luxury these days. I mean, look at the NFL and look at all the rookie quarterbacks getting just cleaned up. Look at Baker, right? Because you have a shortage, you don't really have any good offensive linemen in college, right? But at, at a place like Oklahoma, yeah, running back goes down full. You can lose five running backs, and you can move a wide receiver to running back. That's my point, okay? You can do what Dana Holgerson did with West Virginia in 2012, which is take Tavon Austin, who's wide receiver, and make him a running back because that's how big a deal the position actually is. Offensive linemen for me will always be the worst injuries to a football team. Always. Especially if they're good. Especially. But even so, if you start losing depth at offensive line, you lose competition, you lose reps, and dudes have to play more, and they usually have to play out of position. Because then you start to shuffle your offensive line, and dudes that know how to play guard are yours to play tackle. Dudes that know how to play center all of a sudden play guard. That's not what you want. You want continuity on that line. That is more important than anything that you have behind it. And that's why they succeed, right? So, no, nah, I don't I don't think losing Rodney Anderson was the big deal that a lot of folks made it out to be. Not just because you got running backs, but because the offensive line's still there, right? Cody Ford moving to tackle. Hadn't ever played tackle before. He's a guard. And all of a sudden, he's all conference. I mean, that's, that's how good he's been at right tackle. So I don't really subscribe to the idea that losing a running back, any running back, but but any running back, really, or even three running backs, is as big a deal as you want it to be. I mean, James Conner ain't Le'Veon Bell, but he sure is playing like it at, at Pittsburgh, isn't he? Because that offensive line is good. That offensive line is elite. And as good as Todd Gurley is, he was garbage until they got him an offensive line. Right? Like, keep it 100. You need offensive linemen to win football games like you need defensive linemen to win championships. That's what it is. If we don't have a good defensive line or offensive line, we ain't going to be very good at all. Peak game, right? Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, who is charging? Who is in charge of scheduling? Yeah, that South Dakota thing in the 2019 schedule, I'm not I'm not happy about that either. Be honest with you. I hate that game beyond the schedule. And and next year it's going to be really hard to convince season ticket holders that Yo, this is the best we could do. You got Houston, you got South Dakota, and you got a trip to L.A., right? The games at OU are just bad. South Dakota, Houston. That's what you got at OU, right? I mean, you don't want that. You got Tech coming. You got West Virginia coming. Um, yeah. Got to go to Ed. No, mm -mm. It's, it's a terrible schedule. But And I made that video. What else we got? Blake Horton, do you think the defense will look as good against better offenses? Why? Again, we're qualifying this. TCU is a better offense. TCU put up 500 yards of offense against Ohio State. Ohio State's going to put dudes into the league on defense. What do you want? You say better offense. What's a better offense to you? Tua in Alabama? Like, if they held Tua in Alabama to 20 points, then would you be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, they're, they're all right. Come on, man. Come on. Was that we should schedule UCF? No, we should not. No hell, we should not. I don't want any part of UCF. If you beat UCF, people say that you should have beat UCF. If you lose to UCF, all of a sudden they have a chance to get in the college football playoff courtesy of your dead body. No, nobody wants to schedule UCF, which is why I continue you to say UCF should just go to a Power Five conference. But nah, nah, uh, -uh. no, nobody wants any part of UCF. None. Uh, please tell me how Buki dropped an easy pick six. Well, what happens is when the ball gets close, you wrap your hands around it, and Buki did not. That's how you drop an easy pick six. Oh, come on, man. I mean, look. You think the kid was out there trying to drop the pass? 
You think, yeah, no, I, no, I don't want this one. I'm waiting on the next one. That's not how they do. You know, the, the kid wanted to make a play, probably got excited, dropped the ball. But he plays DB, which means that he kept it out of the hands of the wide receiver, which is his first job, right? There's a reason why dudes are all American when they get six, seven INTs in a season, in a season. But you know what they have to do every game? Stop wide receivers from catching the ball. You know, I mean, come on. There's being hard on the kid, and then there's asking questions like that. Hey, RJ, did you see the TCU kids getting Kyler's autograph at the end of the game? Yeah, I did. Um, and I don't blame him. That's the number nine overall prospect in the MLB draft. He's a better baseball player than he is a football player, and that should terrify Major League Baseball teams. Uh, who coaches UCF? Uh, some bum that got fired from OU. Kid. Uh... I'm confident next week won't be like last year at K-State. That game about killed me last year. That game about kills me every year because it's always too close or they always look like they're going to beat Oklahoma, and I don't I don't like it. I don't like playing Kansas State more than I don't like playing TCU. I guess, ugh, just game gives me the willies. Uh, UCF reminds me of Boise State. They don't remind me of Boise State. They put up more points than Boise State. Where are you signing books this week? Uh, there's a book launch event at OSU Tulsa at the BCS Robbins Room on October 24th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'm going to do a QA. and um, One of my professors is actually going to be on stage with me lobbing questions, and we're going to talk about my book. I also got a lot of radio on, like, next week. Like, I'm on Canadian radio. I'm on On Point, which is on KSO, or KOSU. It's a national program. 10 a.m. I got... Some show on WNYC I can't think of. I got, there's a news talk show in Ireland that's going to, yeah, I got a lot of radio. Matter of fact, I've had to write stuff down on a schedule because I don't know what's going on. That's that's how that's how I've been. Let me see. Just found out Kyler is leading the FBS with his sixth consecutive game with three TD passes. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, the only person that would be ahead of him would be Tua, and Tua had played in the fourth quarter. See, Hyper ain't going to Okie State. He might. He he might. It is it is a move up. It is a move up. But if Barry Odom gets fired in Missouri, they might just hire him. You know. Do you have a list of your book signings posted? No, ma'am, I do not, because as of today, that is the only one uh, in the Tulsa area, or in the Oklahoma area, actually, because the other places that I'm signing books are Portland and Miami. Stillwater, because I, you know, go to school there, and they got bookstores where people buy books, and I'm trying to sell books, so, uh, but also, I need to figure this out, because there's a lot of folks that do want me to sign a book, but a lot of folks that don't, don't, they don't live near, and I don't know that I want to do the, the mail back and forth thing, so I got to figure that one out. How great was the D-line today? It was so-so. It was so-so. It wasn't embarrassing by any means, and... A lot of what they did was rush three men against five, and I expect them to win a lot of matches when they when it's three versus five. But I did see a lot of Kenneth Mann. I saw a lot of Ronnie Perkins. Saw a lot of Gallimore. Saw a lot of Bledsoe. I'll take it. It can always get better, but it, it's not going to get better until you know we get more beef up front. You know, and that takes recruiting. It's hard to recruit defensive tackles. It is the shallowest position in all of football. You know, you find elite defensive tackles, even you find elite offensive line, or, or harder. It is harder to find elite defensive linemen than it is to find elite offensive linemen. And we talked about earlier how hard it is to find elite offensive linemen. Uh, no, I told you, grades are due at OU Insider tomorrow. That's where we do the grading. Uh, do you feel bad for Scott Frost? No! Scott Frost has a 2017 national title. No, I don't feel bad for Scott Frost. Plus, he could have stayed at UCF. And he chose to go to Nebraska. He took the money, dude. I don't know. I don't I don't feel bad for head coaches in big-time college football at all, ever. I really don't. They make several million dollars annually to coach football. I get the stress, and the stress is put on by folks like me who are fans of teams. But at the end of the day, you get to go home to millions of dollars. 
No, I don't feel bad for Scott Frost. I know they're losing games. I know they're trash. I know they're garbage. But him personally? No, nah, I don't feel bad for him. Just like I don't feel bad for Mike or any other big-time college football coach. And for that matter, position coaches, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars at this level. No, man. I feel bad for kids. I feel bad for the kids at Nebraska. Because they, them, they deserve a win. They deserve to get a W. Right? And, and nobody wants to be that 0 for team. Even the Cleveland Browns, I don't feel bad for those dudes because they got paid to play professional football. The kids in college... Nah, man. Take this scholarship. You know, if y'all think the scholarship is worth so much, then just give them the money. Right? Don't give them a free ride. Give them the money that the free ride costs. I'll bet they'll take it every single time. I bet they will not take that scholarship out of your hands. I think they will take that bag and run. Just like the kids who are going to have an opportunity to be drafted in the G League to make 125 k a year. So they don't have to do their one and done thing. And the bag money that they would normally get paid, they get paid over the top. And gets taxed. <laughs> so, nah, man. I don't I don't feel bad for Nebraska. I feel bad uh, for college football players. That's about that's about the limits of my feel bad right now. Let me see. Nebraska's up 28 to 0 right now. Good. Let's see. Nebraska will really have to Nebraska themselves to lose this week. Yeah, it's a shame that we we given that label to Nebraska now. Let's see. Uh, what was Mike's payout? What he was owed, basically, about 450k. He he didn't. I mean, half a million dollars to not coach football for six months. I I would take that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pay me half a million dollars to not do my job. How many of y'all got buyouts? Think about that. How many of y'all at your job, if they fire you, they gotta pay you what they owe you? Nah, ain't nobody else got that kind of gig. Ain't nobody else got the kind of job security where if you get fired, they got to pay you what they're supposed to owe you. And by the way, you get incentivized to not work because, well, if you take a job, they don't have to pay you anymore. What? And then you have coaches that do the analyst thing where they go work for Nick Saban while getting paid by the last place that they got, like Bob Diaco at Oklahoma. He's still making Nebraska money. Right? Right? Matter of fact, I'm going to have to dig into that to see how that works now that he is actually a position coach, which means he basically took a job. But the way I think it works is that Nebraska pays the difference, right? So whatever he was owed at Nebraska is whatever he was getting paid from Oklahoma. So if Oklahoma's paying like 100 k right, and he's owed like a million, Nebraska would still be on the hook for 900 k Right, while Oklahoma pays the hundred k that they're paying for him being a position coach, it's a really good racket if you can be a college football coach. And I know that that is an unpopular opinion, and I know that's not a lot of uh, something a lot of folks want you to say out loud, but it's the facts, man. You know, if you're if you're a decent position coach, you will make three hundred twenty five thousand dollars. If you're a decent defensive coordinator, you will make half a million dollars. If you're a great one, you'll make a million plus. If you're a great college football coach, and by great, I mean you make a New Year's Six, you're probably making around 4 or $5 million. But if you're garbage, if you're trash, if you're actually really bad at your job, like say, ah, uh, who's really bad at their job right now? We talked about Scott Frost. Who else is really bad at their job right now? I got to think about that. Who is really bad at their job? North Carolina, Larry Fedora. Really bad at his job right, right now. You know, they're not doing, they're not docking his pay. You know, if somebody's going to pay you to leave, leave. Eh, absolutely. Uh, did someone say Mike Stoops is going to Oklahoma State? No, that's not what we said. Uh, what year is Brooks? I believe Kennedy Brooks is a red shirt freshman, I think. She red shirted last year, I want to say. So you got you got Kennedy, I think, for at least another year. I think so. Cause I uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain that's correct. Let's see, do you think we will make the CFP? Yeah, all you gotta do is win out and no, I don't think Notre Dame is gonna make it through the rest of their schedule without taking a loss. But even if they do, I think that somebody in that top five or six is gonna take another L. Could be Texas, could be Ohio State, could be Clemson, could be Bama. 
Because I already am picking LSU to beat Alabama because I just think that defense is ridiculous. As good as Alabama's offense is, and it's good, I don't think that they've seen an immovable object like the LSU defense. So I'm going to be really excited about that game because that has all the makings of a real classic, which is something I wish we could say in the Big 12. And the closest we get to it is 48-45 to loss to Texas. I hate it. All right. Uh, what you got? Redmond looked good in the place he was out there. Did you cut your dreads? Nah. They're braided. That's all. I got to braid it. Uh, let it bang. Arsenal fan checks out. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, yep. Kenny Brooks, redshirt freshman. Texas 100% will lose. I, yeah, I don't I don't see them. I, 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 I don't see them. Uh, especially after they should have lost to Baylor. You know, Charlie Brewer... He makes that pass, game's over. Like they get a W in Austin. That game was way closer than than folks in Austin wanted it to be. And I'm sure that Iowa State watched that tape. You know, I'm sure Kansas is like, yo, we can get a W. <laughs> we have gotten a W. We can get a W. And I'm sure West Virginia thinks that they can take every bit. I just Texas is gonna be it's gonna be an it's gonna be a nice W for somebody. I just don't see them making it through the rest of the season undefeated. Ruffin's base is a 4-3. Yeah. Didn't run any of that today. You know? I also think that's got a lot to do with you don't want to blow up what the kids know how to do, right? Because you're coach, in coaching a new scheme and coaching a new system, you're coaching new techniques, you know, and you're coaching new rules. That's not something you want to do even during a bye week. I wouldn't want to do that. I was expecting them to go to a base 4-2-5 and basically run that come hook or crook. And they, what they really did was run 3-3-5 three, three, and 4-2-5, which is kind of sort of what Mike was doing. But I understand why, right? You can't blow up the team. Blow up the team. You can't blow up, blow up the defensive scheme during the middle of the year with a new coordinator and expect everything to be okay. You know, you would do that if you were over, I think. But not right now. Who do you expect us to play in the Big 12 championship? Today is West Virginia. Because I think that West Virginia beats Texas. Um... Actually, no, it wouldn't be West Virginia. No, it'd be Texas. It'd be Texas because... Let's think about this. Let's think this out. Texas beat West Virginia. They make it through the rest of their schedule. They have no losses, right? So they would be in. West Virginia already has a Big 12 loss. We have a Big 12 loss. So West Virginia can't take another one, right? Iowa State, they got a Big 12 loss to us, right? And I think they got a loss to TCU. So right now it's looking hard for it not to be Texas, right? Because OU would need the tiebreaker over West Virginia in the head-to-head. Texas would have the head-to-head over us, and they beat, yeah, they beat West Virginia. Yeah, I think it would be Texas. I think it would be Texas. If Texas loses a game, then it's just all hell breaking loose, right? Because then you got Iowa State. West Virginia in the mix, too, and then you're talking about head-to-heads. So I guess it would depend on who Texas lost to because we know West Virginia lost to Iowa State, so they would have the head-to-head over West Virginia. So uh, that Texas-Iowa State game is going to have a lot to say about that, really. It really is. So that's going to be it's gonna be a really big game. Uh, ooh, Curtis Schwab going with it. Iowa State as his pick. That's what's up. Uh, y'all can say what y'all want about p He's the only DB coming away with picks this season. That's the truth. That, that outside of Robert Barnes, who, who got one in garbage time, I want to say against UCLA. No, Florida Atlantic? One of those. Uh, that's, that's, that's the truth. Trey Brown ain't got one. Trey Norwood ain't got one. You know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, he got, he got picks even when he getting torched. Rumors of Kansas getting bumped out of the Big 12. Nah, man, we need the basketball team. <laughs> Kansas can't. You don't need Kansas or Kansas State, but if you gotta kick Kansas out, you gotta kick Kansas State out. And if you're gonna kick them out, and you're not gonna bring in Arkansas and Nebraska, why? Kick them out for who? BYU? No. The two Arizona State schools? Nah, I'm cool. I don't want any more East Coast West Coast BS in this conference. Don't want to add another Texas school either. You know, folks like add Houston. Nah, man, we got enough Texas schools. Please. You know, don't want Missouri back. 
you know, don't want A&M back. Let me see what else we got here. I, along with my Sooner fans, would like a rematch with Texas. I mean, we all would. Like, if we're picking. Like, you ask me if I'm picking. If I'm picking, I'm picking Texas. But, you know, the Big 12 has a great way of not letting you pick. Just ask TCU, who we thumped in November last year, had to play them again. You know, and don't want that to be our story. There's a lot of basketball teams, period, that just don't want to accept it, though. Going out on a limb here about hiring Derek Mason as the D.C. if Vanderbilt doesn't keep him. Nah. If you can't get Pete Golding or Alex Grinch, you know, I think they might swing for the dude at Utah. I don't, I don't, I don't see bringing in another head coach to go along with an assortment of head coaches. Although that is what Lincoln's been doing. You know, Ruffin was a head coach. Bob was a head coach. Uh, Diaco, not Stoops. Um, of course, Mike was a head coach. I don't know if that's working. Maybe it is, but I wouldn't be what I'd do. I would go get a, a young, really exciting, really fiery, really knows how to coach his defense coordinator. I'd get one of these guys that's never had a big-time defense coordinator job, and I'd get the kind of guy that would want to get a head coaching job as soon as possible, like Shane Beamer, right? I mean, Shane Beamer would be the dude on the staff right now that I'm wondering why you don't get a look for a defensive coordinator. He knows how to coach every phase of football, hasn't coached the offensive side of the ball, knows from special teams like we know, but he's made it a habit of studying on the dudes that know from defense and or special teams. You know, he's coached in, in the ACC and the SEC. And we all like him. And that's a dude that obviously wants a head coaching job at some point. I wouldn't want to hire a defensive coordinator that wants to stay put, is my point. I would want to hire somebody who has aspirations of getting out of here. Because I would know that they know they can't get out of here until they put an outstanding defense on the field. And I would continue to do that. Which is basically what Gundy did at his offensive coordinator's position. Until he got tired of all those dudes just coming through to leave. And hired a guy that would be very happy to just stay put. <laughs> So, you know, we'll see. All right, let's do the roll call, get out of here. I've been yelling enough, and you know what time it is. A lot of y'all need to go watch the recap video anyway and get on to watching Purdue hopefully beat Ohio State tonight. So if you're in the chat, I will shout you out. Let's see, Xavier Jones was good. Ryan Kirk was good. Jay Bones was good. Stephen Gordon was good. Brian Reeder, I see you. Renegade, deuces. Troy Blair is out. Robert Lane is out. Payson Ramirez. See you, fam. Uh, Mr. 49er 1. Stephen Gordon is out. Let's see, Greg Tate, deuces. What's we got in here? Sooner Bears out. That's what's up. Michael Davis Jr. See you, fam. Kellen Wallace, Jay Bones, Lloyd Grissom, Killer B2U. LSU next. Okay. Wayne Thompson's out. David Reed, deuces. Uh, Michael Myers out. Chris Hart Hartzler. That's good. Uh, Rachel. See you. Han Solo out. Carson G, deuces. Robert, appreciate you, fam. Laura, I appreciate you. Bobby Melton's out. Real Deal's out. Ryan's out. Dylan Wood, doses. Dean Farah, Bryce W. Brendan Ludlow, Raw Material. Jacob Thomas, Jared Mitchell, Otis Flannery, Sean Robertson, Doc Winston Boogie. Appreciate that, fam. Uh, let me see. Cameron Turner's out. Ramsey, doses. Cade Mason Music out. Zachary Myers. Let's see. Derek Johns. I'm so sorry. Terry! Let me see. Uh, Philly's lost to the Reds again. <laughs> Deacon's out. Billy Clark deuces. Jared Mitchell. See you, fam. Dieter Cross. Got my Baker shirt yesterday. That's up. I need to wear mine. Jeff Kirkland's out. Gerald Delaney's out. Let's see. Did I miss anybody? Darren Morgan's out. What else we got in here? Who else? Going once. Michael Rios. If Texas makes the playoffs, would you support them over the competition for the Big 12? Probably not. I hate Texas. Um, let's see. What else we got? Ryan, deuces. All right, that's it for me. If you like the videos, please like and subscribe to the channel because I upload a video every single day. Both OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. We have a good time. I will see you tomorrow. Deuces.